Hello everyone, you're very welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about three ways to avoid capital gains tax legally in Ireland. Capital gains tax or CGT is a tax that arises whenever you sell an asset and make a gain or a profit on the sale. CGT is charged on the gain from sale, not the total sales proceeds. In other words, CGT is charged on the difference between the price you sold the asset for and the price you paid for the asset originally. Taking a simple example, if you invest 5,000 euro in a company stock and five years later you sell that stock for 12,000 euro, you'll have a capital gain of 7,000 euro. That 7,000 euro is what's liable to CGT. In Ireland, CGT is charged at a rate of 33%, which is high. In the UK, for example, CGT is charged at a rate of 20%, 28% if the gains are coming from the sale of residential property. This rate can fall to as low as 10% and 18% respectively if the taxpayer is a basic rate taxpayer. In the US, CGT is most commonly charged at a rate of 15%, but it can reach 20% for certain individuals. Point being, Ireland's CGT rate of 33% is comparatively much higher than the rates charged in other tax jurisdictions. Meaning Irish investors, when compared to the likes of UK and US investors, are at a disadvantage. Naturally, it's in the Irish investors' best interest to minimize their capital gains tax liability insofar as possible. Fortunately, there are ways to legally avoid capital gains tax in Ireland, and we're going to talk about three of those ways right now. Number one, don't sell. As a rule of thumb, you can take it that CGT will only arise when you sell an asset for a profit. Emphasis on the word sell. When you invest in company stocks using an online brokerage platform, you'll be able to monitor whether your stock investments are at a gain or a loss at any given point in time. When they're at a gain, you'll have what's known as an unrealized gain. When they're at a loss, you'll have what's known as an unrealized loss. In the eyes of the tax law, unrealized gains and losses are not real. They haven't yet come into existence as real gains or losses under your name. Unrealized gains and losses are sometimes referred to as paper gains and paper losses. Unrealized gains are not liable to CGT. That is the most important thing to understand. So long as you continue to hold the investment, be it a company stock or a rental property, any gain associated with that investment will not be taxable. The gain only becomes liable to CGT when some or all of the investment is sold. When you sell an investment for a profit, what was previously an unrealized gain will now become a realized gain, and realized gains are taxable. In the case of stock investments, when you sell your stocks at a gain, you will have cash sitting in your brokerage account. There is a common misconception that if you reinvest this cash or simply don't transfer it to your bank account, then you won't have to pay CGT. This is not true. As soon as you sell that investment and realize a gain, a CGT liability will arise. What you do with the cash proceeds from sale is irrelevant. You'll have to pay the tax liability one way or another. So naturally, one of the best ways to avoid capital gains tax is to not sell your investments. Sure, you'll have to sell eventually, but why not defer that liability for as long as possible and free up your cash cash today for other more productive use cases. Obviously, it's not as simple as never selling. You could be sitting on a large unexpected gain that you want to realize ASAP. You might identify a better opportunity for your cash elsewhere. There are many reasons why selling could be the best play in a given scenario. Ultimately, it comes down to opportunity cost. If you sell, you'll no longer partake in the performance of the investment and you'll potentially have a CGT liability. If you don't sell, the opposite is true, but you might miss out on better opportunities for your cash elsewhere. This is why it's so important to define your intentions with any given investment before you make that investment. It saves a lot of headache. Under Irish tax law, there are circumstances where CGT can arise on unrealized gains by virtue of the tax law deeming an unrealized gain to have become a realized gain upon the happening of a given event. For example, if you own shares in a company and and you choose to give those shares to your sister, the tax law will deem you to have sold those shares at market value to your sister and a CGT liability will be due, even if no cash exchanged hands. Some of you might be saying, what about ETFs? Unrealized gains on ETFs are taxed every eight years. And while that is true, ETFs aren't liable to CGT. They're liable to 41% exit tax. Though ETFs might become liable to CGT sometime in the near future. Check out the 
video popping up on screen after this one to learn more about that. Number two, the annual CGT exemption. Irish tax law states that the first 1,270 euro of your net realized gains in every tax year are exempt from CGT. Expanding on our example from earlier, if you invest 5,000 euro in a company stock and five years later you sell that stock for 12 grand, you'll have a realized capital gain of 7,000 euro. The first 1,270 euro of this gain is exempt from CGT, meaning the balance, which is 5,730 euro, is liable to tax at 33%, which is 1,890 euro and 90 cents. The value of the tax saving here is 419 euro and 10 cents, which is 33% of 1,270 euro. This is the maximum benefit that you can get from the annual CGT exemption in a given tax year. The exemption is offered on a use it or lose it basis, meaning if you have no realized gains in a given tax year, your annual CGT exemption for that year is lost. It can't be carried forward. Therefore, there is an incentive to have at least 1,270 euro worth of realized gains in every tax year because those gains will be tax free. This is where a tax planning opportunity presents itself. To keep things simple, we'll assume that we only have one company stock in our portfolio. Let's say we invest 10,000 euro at the beginning of the year, 1,000 shares at a share price of 10 euro per share. Towards the end of the year, we notice that our stock has performed well and the value of our investment is now sitting at 12,000 euro, an unrealized gain of 2,000 euro. This means that the share price is now 12 euro per share, i.e. 1,000 shares at 12 euro per share equals an investment value of 12,000 euro. We want to make the most of our annual CGT exemption, so we sell exactly 635 shares. When we sell exactly 635 shares, we realize a capital gain of 1,270 euro, i.e. the difference between 635 shares sold at 12 euro per share and 635 shares purchased at 10 euro per share. That gain is fully covered by the annual CGT exemption and therefore no tax liability will arise. Most investors who use this strategy will choose to immediately reinvest the total sales proceeds, which in this case is 7,620 euro, right back into the stock. By immediately reinvesting the 7,620 euro, the investor is purchasing shares at the higher price of 12 euro per share. The total value of their investment is exactly the same as it was before the sale, but the cost of their investment on paper is now higher. Here's what I mean. At the point of sale, we owned 1,000 shares in the company, which we originally bought for 10 euro per share. The market value of our investment was 12,000 euro at the point of sale. After the sale and the subsequent reinvestment, we now own 365 shares at a cost of 10 euro per share and 635 shares at a cost of 12 euro per share. In other words, we still own 1,000 shares and the market value of our investment is still 12,000 euro. We just have a higher cost basis on paper. What this means is that in the future, when we sell our shares, we'll have a smaller taxable realized gain as compared to what we would have had had we not availed of the annual CGT exemption to increase our cost basis for free. So by reinvesting the sales proceeds, the benefit of this strategy presents itself in the form of a lower CGT liability in the future. This can be done every year to increase the cost of your investments for free. This is known more commonly as a bed and breakfast transaction. In the UK, bed and breakfast transactions are prohibited. An investor must wait 30 days before reinvesting their sales proceeds back into the same shares that they sold. This is because the UK annual CGT exemption is much higher than Ireland, standing at £12,300. Therefore, there's much more of an incentive to abuse this exemption. However, no such rule for gains exists in Ireland and investors are free to use this strategy if they so choose. It's worthwhile noting that the illustrative example I use to explain this concept is an oversimplification in practice. This is because it's much more likely that you'll be investing in company stocks throughout the year as opposed to one single point in time. The implication of this is that you'll own shares in the same company at different prices. And when it comes to calculating your realized gain for a given year under Irish tax law, you must use the first in first out method, better known as FIFO. Under FIFO, shares that you purchase first are deemed to be the shares that you sell first upon sale. This quickly becomes an exercise of ensuring that you're selling the right amount of shares based on what shares will be deemed to have been sold under 
Irish tax law. Put simply, it's easier to execute this strategy from an administrative perspective if you invest via lump sums as opposed to euro cost averaging. The less active the investing, the better. In my opinion, it's not a big deal if you don't fully utilize your annual CGT exemption. I own stocks and I don't personally use this strategy, primarily out of laziness if I'm being honest. But even if you fully utilized your exemption every year for 40 years, your potential tax saving will be capped at 16,764 euro, which in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot. Plus that's 16,764 euro in 40 years time. When accounting for the time value of money, the real benefit is even less. Now, if executing this strategy is an easy task for you, then sure, go for it. Every little helps. But I wouldn't be obsessing over it. It's not going to make the difference between retiring early and retiring at the normal retirement age, especially when your portfolio starts to get into the six and seven figure ranges. It's also worthwhile noting that the annual CGT exemption does not apply to ETF gains because once again, ETFs aren't taxed under the CGT regime. Number three, loss utilization. The basic premise behind loss utilization is simple. Realized losses can be set against realized gains. If you sell one investment and make a 5,000 euro gain and you sell another investment and you make a 5,000 euro loss, your net position is actually zero. It wouldn't make sense for revenue to tax you on the 5,000 euro gain because you haven't actually made any money in reality. If your realized losses in a given tax year happen to exceed your realized gains, you can carry your losses forward to future tax years where they can be used against future realized gains. Likewise, if you have realized losses in a given tax year but no realized gains, you can carry the full loss forward to future tax years. There are, of course, tax planning opportunities associated with realized losses. However, before we talk about them, it's important to understand that there are rules which limit your ability to avoid capital gains tax using realized losses, specifically for company stocks. There are two rules to be aware of. Number one, if you sell shares that are loss making, you can't repurchase those shares for a period of four weeks. If you do, the realized loss on the sale will not be available for offset against current or future realized gains on other investments. The only gains that could be reduced by the losses would be gains arising on the shares which were repurchased within the four week period. Put simply, if you want the loss to be available against all of your gains, don't repurchase the shares within four weeks of sale. If you repurchase some, but not all of the shares within four weeks, only part of the loss will be restricted. And number two, if you're planning on selling a loss making stock, you shouldn't buy any more stock in that company in the four weeks prior to the sale. Reason being, under Irish tax law, if there's a purchase of company stock and within a period of four weeks, there's a sale of the same company stock, any gain or loss is to be first calculated on a last in first out basis, aka LIFO, and then where there's excess stock sold on a first in first out basis, aka FIFO. This is best explained using a very simple example. Let's say at the beginning of the year, you buy 10 shares in a company. Towards the end of the year, you realize that your investment is loss making, but you still like the company stock at its current price, so you buy 10 more shares. Two weeks later, you sell 10 shares in the company to realize your loss. Normally, the FIFO basis of calculating gains and losses would apply, and your unrealized loss on the first lot of 10 shares would become a realized loss. However, because the sale happened within four weeks of the last purchase, the Irish tax law applies LIFO for calculating gains and losses. So your most recent purchase of 10 shares is deemed to have been disposed of, not the first lot of 10 shares. This can result in you realizing a smaller loss or even a gain on disposal, depending on how the share price has moved in the two weeks since you bought the shares. If you had sold 12 shares, LIFO would apply to the first 10 and FIFO would apply to the remaining two. Likewise, if we only purchased five shares within the four weeks prior to selling 10 shares, LIFO would apply to five shares and FIFO would apply to the remaining five. With that in mind, here's how you could make efficient use of your losses. Scenario one, you have a loss making investment that you don't want to own anymore. Your plan is to sell this investment and realize the loss. Before you sell, you make sure that you don't buy any more shares in that company in the four weeks prior to sale. Once you sell, you then have options. Option one, if you have realized gains 
returns on other investments, you can use your loss against these gains. Any excess losses can be carried forward. Option two, if you don't have realized gains on other investments, you could make some. Similar to the bed and breakfast strategy, you would sell shares in another profitable investment, realize the gain, use your losses and the annual CGT exemption to reduce your taxable gain to nil, and then repurchase the shares at a higher base cost. Therefore, in the future, you'll have a smaller taxable realized gain. Option three is to simply carry the full loss forward. Scenario two is where you've realized capital gains from sales of investments. However, while you do have loss making shares, these are shares that you want to hold long term. In other words, if you sell them, you'd want to buy them back. In order to successfully extract your losses for use against your gains, you must do the following. Number one, ensure that you don't buy any more shares in the loss making investment in the four weeks prior to sale. And number two, ensure that you wait four weeks after the sale before repurchasing shares in the loss making investment. The risk here is that the share price of the loss making investment could increase significantly in the four weeks after the sale and you'd miss out on the gains. Equally though, the share price of the loss making investment could decrease significantly during this period, which would be good news for you. It's important to emphasize that the restrictions on loss utilization only apply to company stocks. Utilizing losses on rental properties is much more straightforward. As for cryptocurrencies, I don't believe revenue has provided explicit guidance as to whether or not the restrictions apply. If you're setting up a euro cost averaging strategy into company stocks, you could set it up in such a way that the time between investments is at least four weeks, potentially even five weeks to give yourself a one week buffer. That way, you'll never have to worry about the loss restrictions. The other option is to simply pause your investments as needed. The existence of these rules is yet another reason why day trading in the stock market isn't a good idea. Because you're entering and exiting trades over short periods of time, likely less than four weeks, any realized losses could very well be restricted. Given the nature of day trading and the high failure rate, you'll most definitely be incurring losses, but you might not be able to utilize those losses against gains. It's important to note that realized losses are used against realized gains before the annual CGT exemption in a given tax year. This is an important consideration if you're trying to use the bed and breakfast strategy alongside a loss utilization strategy. Finally, as you might have already guessed, realized losses on stocks and other investments which are liable to CGT can't be used to reduce the value of realized gains on ETFs. So that's three ways to avoid capital gains tax legally in Ireland. There are of course other ways to reduce capital gains tax liabilities in Ireland. These other ways primarily involve the utilization of specific CGT reliefs like principal private residence relief, entrepreneur relief and retirement relief among others. Let me know in the comment section if you'd like to see a video covering each of these reliefs. It's also worthwhile mentioning that investing via a pension is inherently one of the best ways to avoid not only capital gains tax but also income tax and exit tax given that all investment gains and investment income realized within a pension are tax free. All the more reason to start a pension as soon as possible. Before you go you might be interested in this next video which talks about five ways to avoid inheritance tax legally in Ireland. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.